ruler of Dubai welcomes Emirati lawyers to Zabil Palace. S&P cuts long-term U.S. credit rating. And China prepares for powerful typhoon. This is Seven National News. In our top story, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Vice President and Prime Minister and ruler of Dubai, met with Emirati lawyers and discussed with them matters surrounding law and justice. The ruler of Dubai welcomed the lawyers at Zabil Palace and stressed the importance of justice as a foundation for stability and security of the community. He also hailed the number of Emirati men and women entering into the legal profession today. The meeting was also held in the presence of His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Crown Prince of Dubai, and His Highness Sheikh Maktoum bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Deputy Ruler of Dubai. The Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan Charitable Foundation and Humanitarian Foundation has funded the construction of the Faculty of Nursing and Optics in the Al Najah National University in Palestine. The university is Palestine's largest, with over 16,500 students and 19 faculties. The 20 million dirham project is under the directives of the chairman of the Zayed Foundation, His Highness Sheikh Nahyan bin Zayed Al Nahyan. This is the second educational project the foundation has funded in Palestine, which has built five schools in five different areas, at a cost of 12 million dirhams. The new faculty will give admission to thousands of additional students who want to study medicine, nursing, pharmacology and optics. Etihad Rail and Emirates Steel have signed a memorandum of understanding to use rail as the primary method for steel transportation across the UAE. Construction on the UAE's national railway network is set to start this summer and the MOU will help Emirates Steel with its distribution needs and steel products. Emirates Steel officials stated that the company is one of the heaviest users of road haulage in the Emirates and therefore real environmental benefits will be realised by taking trucks off the road, easing road congestion and enhancing road safety through rail. Abu Dhabi National Oil Company, Etihad Rail's first customer, will also use, use the rail to transport granulated sulphur for export. When complete, the 40 billion dirham Etihad railway network will span 1,200 kilometres across the Emirates. Health and fitness continues to be an important focus for the community. With lifestyle diseases still a challenge, it's not a surprise that the number of fitness centres are increasing in Dubai. Evolve, a newly opened facility, says they aim to change the public's mindset and help the community to shape up. Over the weekend, buffed and lithe men and women across the city came down to Evolve, the newest high-end fitness facility to open in Dubai. This is the latest playground for elite fitness enthusiasts, co-founded by Dubai resident Dan Harrison. The unconventional and forward-thinking co-founder and director of the facility has health buffs talking, running, pushing and puffing for breath. Change conventional wisdom. And what I mean by that is... Uh change the way people think about fitness. Um, everybody's so used to doing the bog standard, go to a big gym and use a machine, go on a treadmill, whatever it is. Uh, here we'd like to take things that little bit above, uh, encourage people to do uh, modern day sort of exercises that are now being proven and tested to be the most up and coming forms of uh, exercise, uh, the most scientific methods of how to train people, how people should train. Um, and do it in an environment that's quite exclusive, quite private, so the client themselves get the best out of their uh, hour or whatever it is that we're trying to teach them. As part of this commitment to get the community fit, all Fridays during the Holy Month is open to everyone free of charge. Miss Diva Fitness WBFF winner, fitness model and trainer Darren Brown was also present in support of the event. According to her, fitness begins with a choice. I think uh, some of the major challenges are the people's mindset. You know, they, they're not willing to put it, the effort in and stuff. And I think you've got to have that mindset of wanting to make changes in your life. And once you've got that change in your mind and stuff, you'll be able to sort of 
take the next step. Uh, what I find with this Evolve facility is amazing, like the support you get, one-on-one -on -one individual attention and stuff, as opposed to some of the fitness gyms in Dubai, it's sort of like you're all on your own, you walk into that gym, it's very intimidating, you don't know how to use the machines or anything. Something like this, uh, they've got the trainers to help you, one-on-one -on -one interaction, so it's really motivating and stuff. But most important in Dubai is people must want to change. At first glance, this doesn't seem like a place for regular people. However, professionals say the toned bodies aim to inspire every resident to make the decision to get healthy. At the same time, Marcus Smith, founder and owner of Inner Fight and at present the fittest man in the Middle East, also came and showed residents how it is done. No pain, no gain. When I started fitness, you know, I just moved a little bit, a few, few sessions a week. Now I train every single day. So the biggest thing in the world today is that people say they don't have time to get fit. Just get out, do it 20 minutes a day, an hour a day. Fitness is good. It releases chemicals in your body that actually make you happier. So my message to everyone is move more and enjoy it. According to fitness experts, many residents opt to forgo exercise and diet during Ramadan. It is hoped that with many activities lined up, residents will take up the chance to get fit and healthy. Khadija Sali, 7 National News. Individuals who work in strenuous and demanding work environments are not exempt from fasting according to a series of fatwas. The Dubai Islamic Affairs and Charitable Activities Department stated, however, that it is permissible for people to break their fasts if forced by the tough nature of their jobs as long as they make up for it later. Should individuals have to break their fasts, they've been advised to do so just with just enough food and water to get them through for that moment in time. They added that only if a person deems it beyond their power, they may end their fast. The CIA CA stated that people in team leader positions should work out a different schedule over the holy month for their staff. The Criminal Investigation Department of Dubai Police arrested a female gang running fake websites. According to the authorities, the women were posting photographs and phone numbers of girls online to lure young people to access the fraudulent sites and communicate with them. The electronic department of the CID monitored the sites and forums closely until they had enough evidence to make the arrest. The group of Asian women worked from an apartment in Burdubai where police found a number of computers, mobile phones and storage devices. Authorities are encouraging the public to report any phishing websites or those that are malicious and suspect in nature. And looking to news abroad now, China closed down ports, evacuated thousands of residents and strengthened safety measures in a nuclear plant in an effort to brace what could be the most powerful typhoon to hit the country in years. Typhoon Muifa is due to hit China's eastern seaboard this weekend with winds of up to 45 metres a second. China's eastern Shenzhen provincial government ordered at least 4,000 vessels to return to the country's busiest harbours. Operations at several oil, dry bulk and container ports near the area were also suspended on Friday. The local authorities also evacuated over 200,000 residents. It also stepped up safety measures in Kishan Nuclear Plant, the nation's massive nuclear plant located along its eastern coast, according to CCTV. And a polar bear attacked a group of tourists on Friday, killing one person and seriously injuring four in the Norwegian Arctic island group of Svalbard. A party of around 80 on a British school's exploring society trip were camping on a remote glacier when the attack took place early in the morning. The four injured, who included two leaders of the trip, were being flown to Tromso in Norway. The visitors were attacked at the edge of the Von Post Glacier, 40 kilometres east of Svalbard's main town on the central island of Spitsbergen. A renowned polar bear habitat, Svalbard is about halfway between Norway's mainland and North Pole. The injured were taken by helicopter to a hospital after authorities were notified of the attack by satellite phone. The bear was eventually killed. And up next, we have the day's business news, so stay with us.